Welcome back to the channel. I'm here to do another super secret deck tech for one of my EDH decks. This one I called America. It was an oppression deck. 1v1 land destruction. Um, I'll try to keep this under 10 minutes. It actually runs Numa the Devastator, 6 mana 6 6 flying dragon, and when he deals damage to a player, I can pay 3 and I can destroy 2 lands. Um, it only runs 36 lands, so 5 non basics for mana fixing, including Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds, and then I'm running 15 Full Art Mountains. I figured if I'm going to destroy lands, including my own, they need to be Full Art. Uh, then I run 8 Plains and 8 Full Art Islands, and that is the land base for the deck. And then now we get into the Mana Rocks. I think the Mana Rocks are stupidly important. Only because I think that when I just start destroying lands, I still need to be able to produce colors to cast my spells. So I still need to have colors available to me. And I can't get this to stand up, but we run Manolith as one of my 16 artifacts in the deck. Is it Signet? Boros Signet? Prophetic Prism can draw cards. I mean, I guess the Azorius Clue Stone and the Is it Clue Stone can draw cards too. Commander Sphere draws a card, late game if I need. Um, I dropped Boros Clue, Clue Stone, Dark Steel Ingot, Call Night Gem. I actually thought this was really good tech for this deck, mostly because when it enters the battlefield, I can return two lands to my hand to prevent them from being destroyed late game, and it still adds two mana of any one color. Everflowing Chalice just can be kicked late game for a lot of charges. Uh, now we're going to get into some of the enchantments. Some are oppressive enchantments. Some are strictly global. Uh, I think Price of Glory is the, one of the best for this deck. So when somebody taps land, it actually just burns them. It burns that land, just destroys it. Parallel Thoughts allows me to search two to four seven cards I want. It's just interesting. I, I like it. I think it's fun. Monastery Siege either, you know, prevents people from targeting me through attacks or just allows to draw additional cards. I usually just choose additional cards since I don't have a lot of card draw. Blind Obedience just prevents quick quick attacks with tokens. Orcish Mine allows me to enchant one of their lands, and when I do, when it becomes tapped or beginning my upkeep, I get to remove one of those counters, and then it gets destroyed and deals two damage to that player. Narcolepsy taps down a creature. Oblivion Ring removes. Pacifism... Uh, prevents attacking. Lost in Thought prevents attacking and activate abilities can't be played unless they pay the tax for it, which is exiling three cards. Whisper Silk Cloak for my commander allows me to get in some damage. Swift Foot Boots allows me to get in some damage. Elixir puts my lands back into my library. Keening Stone mills them. I think that's a fun alternate win card in my opinion. I really like it. And now we're going to get into the instants and sorceries. So Demolish, Decree of Annihilation, these are all removal. Destroy all lands, Armageddon, Jokel Hops, fantastic art, you can't complain. And it still says Barry, so that's alright. Lay Waste, Pillage, Wake of Destruction, uh, destroys multiple lands. If I choose Island, it's all Islands. Melt Terrain, I like. Cryoclasm only chooses, only targets Plains or Island, but it also deals, it's a lightning bolt to the player as well. And we're going to move this up a little bit. Okay. Tectonic Rift destroys the land and prevents creatures without flying to block so my general can get in. Well, I mean, I guess if they had a blocker for my general anyways, I mean, it has flying, so... Whatever. Each player sacrifices a land with Tremble. I like it. It gets around indestructibility, like Terra Eternal. Volcanic Awakening with Storm. Late game, Storm can go off like crazy. It's fun. Volcanic Upheaval allows me to just destroy lands. Dwarven Landslide. I can destroy two lands if I pay the kicker. Whirling Terrain deals damage to a player equal to the number of land cards in that player's graveyard, so this could be a win condition at the end. Plunder's got Suspend, still destroyed lands. 
Scorched Earth deals one damage to each human and destroys the land. Craterized land. Lava Ball Trap, if somebody's ramping, I can get them, destroy two of their lands and deals four to each creature, possible board wipe. Stone Rain, I like the Kamigawa symbol. Into the Maw Hell uh, is creature removal and land destruction in one. Some of the other instants and sorceries are creature removal, so Path to Exile, Celestial Purge for another exile. Illicit Auction, one of my favorite cards in here. Um, I can target a pesky creature or just something that I want, and we just start bidding for it, and we bid life, and whoever wins gains control of it. Fun little card for any EDH deck running red, in my opinion. Devastation Tide allows me to just return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. I can miracle it off for two. Factor Fiction, Therese Nielsen Art, and, you know, creates a little chaos when they have to make a decision. Treasure Cruise, draw three cards. I can delve away some lands or something else. And now we're starting to get into the creatures. Uh, Helkai Tyrant is actually one of my latest ad additions. He is an alternate win for the deck, since I already have 16 artifacts total in the deck. Uh, he's an alternate win, so that way when he deals damage to combat damage to a player, I can gain control of all artifacts that player controls. I can do this multiple times to multiple players, and I can win the game if I have 20 more artifacts. So, fun win. Ruhan the Fomori is a 4-mana 7-7 seven, seven that in one-on-one -on -one attack always attacks that opponent. And if somebody starts seeing Numat the Devastator and they freak out a little bit and they don't want to play, I just toss Ruhan the Fomori up and they don't really know that it is still a land destruction deck. But he can get in, you know, three swings later, it's commander damage win. So, not bad in my opinion. Lightning Angel. Uh, when I started choosing some of these creatures... I started choosing just sky colors. I wanted red, white, and blue, all three, and the best creatures with those. And Lightning Angels, a four mana, three, four, flying haste, vigilance creature. I mean, it's just fantastic, and I had to go Apocalypse Art. Mantis Rider, a standard all star of its time, three mana, three, three, with flying vigilance and haste as well. Uh, I think you just see the theme that they're just powerful creatures. Asperia, not so powerful. It's a six mana, six, four with flying, but I can draw a card if somebody attacks me. But I had six of them in my collection, so I decided to give it a shot. Sting Moggy allows me to destroy lands if I pay for and start removing counters from it. Detritivore is suspended, and then I get to destroy, you know, non-target or target non-basic lands every time I remove a suspend counter. And its power and toughness when it comes in are equal to the non-basics. Avalanche Riders is a Hasty 2-2 two, two for 4 mana, and I, when it comes into play, I can destroy target land. Orcish Settlers is a late game mana sink. It's 2 mana, but late game I can pay XX red and tap it and just destroy X target lands. It's pretty nice. Fault Grinder, just, you know, big old body. Even casting it for evoke just to evoke just to destroy lands. My last two creatures, Petrovark. I've had one of the, this in my collection for a long, long time. And when Petrovark comes into play, I get to exile a land, and then when it leaves, I get to return that back into play. So not the best, but still exiles. And Shiv and Wumpus, I think just the frame and the art from the the Planar Chaos is just incredible. And it's a you know six six trampler for four mana, and it comes into play. Any player may sacrifice a land if they do. Like it goes back on the the top of its library, but you know they have to sacrifice a land, and it's a six six trampler. So not bad, but. That is my land destruction deck featuring Numat the Devastator. If you have any questions or suggestions, I think one of the cards I was looking, I mean, this is a budget. I spent only $40 on cards and 10 on the the sleeves, the Dragon Shield sleeves. Dragon Shield. Huh. But I had all the full art lands, so I didn't cost, spend money in that. But uh, Kelvin Firebombers was one card that I was looking at on a budget. It's still only like $1.50, but it's really, really powerful. But other than that, that is the deck. Feel free to, you know, leave comments, suggestions, like, and subscribe. Tell your friends. I'm constantly building new decks on Tapped Out, and I, I love deck building. So thank you. Have a nice day.